Good morning, sirs. Good morning. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice. She standeth in the top of high places, by the way, in the places of the past. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. I read to you from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning. We come to praise your name, to give thanksgiving, and to just say, thank you, Lord, for covering us. Lord, it's been a long week, many months, a long year, but you're there. You never leave nor forsake your home. And we just want to say thank you. Yes, thank you, Lord, because you always supply our needs. You give us what we need. You lead us the right way if we just follow. Father, we just want to praise you today because we know that you're a good God. And that you can do anything but fail. As we go through your word, Lord, everything is there to show us what you want us to be. We don't have to guess about it. We don't have to run ahead. We just need to trust and follow you. And I say thank you. So today, Father, as we go through your word, open all hearts and minds. Bless those that are here, those that are on their way, those that are lost, Father, touch them too. Those in their sick rooms, those that are incarcerated, those that are in high places. You are the Alpha and the Omega, all powerful, and we just want to in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today, our lesson is entitled Obedience and Building the Tabernacle. We'll go around the room and we'll start um, with Sister Winston. If you would have Christina read verse 16, and then you take the next three. Thank you. 
set the state of the art and put the mercy seat above upon the art. And he brought the art into heaven, the tabernacle, and set up the veil of the covenant and covered the art with testimony as the Lord commanded Moses. One more. 29. And he put the art Mike, would you finish starting with the 30th verse? 30th. And he set the labor between the tent of the congregation and the altar and put water there to wash withal. 34. Then a cloud covering the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 38. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and fire was on it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Amen. Uh, this lesson is coming from Exodus chapter 40, 16 through 21, 29 through 30, 34, and 38. The time is 1445 B.C. in the place Sinai Desert. Let them outline the people's preparations, the sign of God's blessing. Today's aim is to see what Moses did in obedience to God's commands. Principle, to understand the significance of obeying God and the way he responds and their application to live our lives so as to be a living tabernacle, holy to the Lord. When I read the scriptures for this lesson, you know, it took my mind back to years ago, right here in Bible study, and the pastor had gotten us to a place where we were reading about putting the tabernacle together. Mm -hmm. All of the posts and the studs and this. And in my head, I was saying, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Why do we have to be doing this? I'm just being honest with you. That was one of the most boring times for me because it was talking about the construction of a tabernacle. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the chapters just went on and on and on about this, all these things that were used to put this tabernacle together. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this, those memories came back. And what I got from this is we really don't need to concern ourselves with every screw, every post, the frame. I mean, it's good to know that, but it's a message in here. And if we could just get the message, then that's what God wants us to know. And we need to know that the message is about obedience. Mm -hmm. And in these lessons, it's showing Moses and his obedience to God's commands and how Moses used other people and they had to be obedient too mm -hmm. for all of these things to come into play. So, I, I, I read this, the people's <laughs> preparations, uh, starting at verse 16. But I wanted to start with the very first, because it 
it brings us right on in. And in uh, chapter 40, verse 1, we start out with the Lord's instructions on how he instructs Moses to set up and anoint the tabernacle. In verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Now they were right here now at their first year anniversary. Mm -hmm. All of these other things had taken place. They had been freed from Egypt. And now they were in the wilderness where there was going to be a construction of a tabernacle. And they were going to know that God was with them. So, on the third, in the third verse, and thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony and cover the ark with the veil. Moses didn't have to stop and think or go on his own because he got specific instructions from God. Mm -hmm. When we get specific <laughs> instructions, we need to be obedient to that. Because sometimes with man, somewhere along the way, we decide, you know, I could do this a little bit better if I do it like this. Yeah. Or I could speed it up a little bit if I cut this corner. But it's all about obedience. When people are constructing homes, they have uh, blueprints. Blueprint that they're supposed to follow. And when they don't follow it, it becomes a mess. It might not be a mess at first, mm -hmm. but it'll end up being a mess because somebody went away from the blueprint. And thou shalt bring in the table and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the candlestick, and light the lamps thereof. And thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle. And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the ta tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Things had to be put in a certain place, not just any place. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt set the labor between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and shall put water therein. So you see, everything was to be set in order. The labor was the basin for washing. And at the altar, that's where they were going to be doing the animal sacrifice. So everything in its place. And thou shalt set up the court round about, and hang up the hanging at the court gate. And thou shalt take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is therein, and shalt hallow it, and all the vessels thereof, and it shall be holy, set apart, set apart. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all his vessels, and sanctify the altar. And it shall be an altar most holy. And thou shalt anoint the labor and his foot, and sanctify everything in its own place, sanctified, anointed, set apart. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. The priests, they needed to be cleansed. And thou shalt, before they enter, and thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him, that he may minister unto me 
in the priest's office, and thou shalt bring his sons and clothe them with coats, and thou shalt anoint them as thou didst anoint their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office, for their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generation. Here we start with our, our lesson. Thus did Moses, very important. Moses did exactly what he was commanded to do. According to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. It was set up and in place. And Moses reared up the tabernacle and fastened his sockets and set up the boards thereof and put in the fires thereof and reared up pillars. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above upon it as the Lord commanded Moses. And he took and put the testimony into the ark. Remember those stones, the tablets, and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the cover and covered the ark of the testimony as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, we don't want to think that Moses did all of these things by himself. No, no way. Because he had other people and remember, there were millions of folks. So he had, in our past readings, we know that he had elders mm -hmm. that he was communicating to and followers. And so Moses had to rely on people that were obedient, were going to do what they were told to do so that everything could work. So it wasn't just Moses doing all of this. But God was in control. Mm -hmm. God gave the command of what to do, how to do it, what to use. And they had all of these things when they came out of Egypt mm -hmm. to work with. Them. They had everything. So uh, we're going to fill in going down to 29, because it says in verse 22, And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle, northward without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation, over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle. 29 in our lesson. And he put the altar of the burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation and offered up on it the burnt offering and the meat offering as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set the labor between the tent of the congregation and the altar and put water there to wash withal. Everything in its proper place for sacrifices unto the Lord. To, to do just what the Lord commanded. 
how he commanded it. Obedience in building the tabernacle. And if we don't get anything else from this, we need to get the point that it was all about being obedient. It trickles right down to us today. Being obedient. You know, in God's house, we want things to be done in decency and in order. Do we go overboard sometimes? Yes, we do. But that's that man instinct. You know, for our communion table. It's so precious, you know, what we use the table for. And we use, put a, a spread on the table. We have our trays with the uh, unleavened bread and with the juice that symbolizes the wine. And we don't have to do a whole lot of other things mm -hmm. to do that, to have communion so that we can remember because that's what it's all about. Just the remembrance. When we come in, we want to have God's house clean. You know, we want to have a clean attitude when we come in his house. All of that because we are the light to others that don't even know what the light is. Sometimes they see it. Mm -hmm. And they'll speak on it. But that's what we are to be. So it's about being obedient to the Lord. Deacon I was I was thinking about what you had said earlier about all the detail. But, you know, it's interesting to me. Uh, yeah, it can be dry. That part, the part, some of that can really be dry. And you sit there and you wonder, why is all this in here? But... The thing you got to remember at all times, it's in there for a reason. Yeah. It's in there for a reason. It's not. It's no wasted space. Nothing. No filler. He didn't fill it. He didn't fill it with stuff that wasn't there. That it, that wasn't necessary. Everything he put in there. Everything he told Moses to do. Everything he told uh, uh, Noah to do. Because that was the, that was a that was a big plan too. Yeah. I mean, he wanted it this way, that way, and and the funny thing about it is. Uh, uh, that's a blueprint. The the uh, the ark, the Noah's ark, oh, is yeah. a blueprint for wherever uh, where where ship buildings uh, ships are built now. Mm -hmm. But anyway, getting back to this, God knows what He wants and it's for a certain purpose. That's right. And we may not know it. We may have a clue, but the thing about it is, you have to follow what He says because He knows what He knows best. Right, and it's for Him. Yeah, exactly. it's not it's not for us but to do the service mm -hmm. but everything is for him mm -hmm. and it's just like with us we know how we like things pertaining to us mm -hmm. you know and it's nothing more aggravating when somebody comes along and tries to change things pertaining to us you know if you like blue and that's what you choose to wear. That's your preference. But don't make me wear blue. You understand? And so this is the frame of mind that we have to have. Like I said, it's all God's plan. Mm -hmm. All God's Bar up there. You got to put, go back to God's word 
and you you put things in that honor God. Right. So before you do anything in the house of the Lord, you're supposed to uh, go to Him. Moses got this instruction from God. Yes. So when I looked at this, it was said, you want your house to look nice and clean. If you have anything in you about God, you want cleanliness. Some people don't even have no God and they want cleanliness. True. They want things to look nice. So when I looked at this, God said, I'm preparing you. I want you to prepare them to go to build me a temple. Uh, and, and then you got to know what the purpose is. He said, you got to build it the way I say because you got to take this up and move. Right. So you just can't throw anything in there. So when I looked at it, God was dealing with the people about, yes, obedience and following, but doing it God's way. And I like how it took us there and said, all these exact things, God said, but Moses didn't come up like you said with it. He got the instruction from God, and that's, that's what right. we should do. Because the house of the Lord is very important. And come, that just what we talking about this bill, here we're talking about our bodies also. How we supposed to, everything we do, it should be honoring God. Amen. Anyone else? Verse 31 in the chapter leading up to 34. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation, and when they came near unto the altar, they watched as the Lord commanded most. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar, and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Verse 34 in our lesson, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Well, now, when we hear that the cloud covered, that meant God was satisfied. He was agreeable to whatever and how everything was done as he commanded. Because when, think about us, when we have, when we want things a certain way, and everything goes just as planned, we're happy. Mm -hmm. But if we walk in and they done changed the color, the color scheme, they done took the chairs away and brought something we didn't ask for. We want to walk, and some people have turned around and walked right back out the door because they're displeased. But God wanted his people to know that he was there with them. And this is what the cloud and the fire signify, his presence. So, that cloud covered the tent. It says sometimes it filled the tent. So, so filled with its glory. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 35. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because it was so filled up with God's glory, with his, that cloud, because the cloud abode there on. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. This was constructed so that they could pick it they could take it down and take it with them, set it up again wherever they stopped. 
But if the cloud was not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. See, God had everything planned. Yes, he move when I say move. move. And verse 38, for the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and the fire was on it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journey. How magnificent is that to know that God is with them. God is with them. God is with them. And, and it's a lesson for us to know that God is with us no matter what we're going through what station of life we're in. You know, I heard somebody speaking of a, a gentleman and, and they were saying, well, you know, he's 65 years old and you don't think that's old. I looked at that person, I said, wait till you get 65 and tell me if you think you're old. <laughs> and I was serious. I said, let me tell you something. God is good. I said, I am 74 years old. And I know a lot of 74 years old people that don't get around as good as me. Some younger. Mm -hmm. Some 65. Mm -hmm. Some 55. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. Yep. And I know it. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. brag about it or boast. Because I know it's nothing that I've done. But God. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me about a 65 year old man. And because of the clothes that he wear. Because he don't wear jeans with holes in them. Oh. Because he don't wear sneakers. Because he dresses conservative. Mm -hmm. You look at that like that's something negative. Mm -hmm. No. That's right. Uh-uh. <laughs> the Lord will preserve you. Yo. And I just can't hardly stand it when I hear these people come out of their mouth with mm -hmm. foolishness. Thanks, that's true. Wait till you get that age uh -huh. and tell me how you feel. <laughs> Cause you ain't acting your age right now. <laughs> but you know, God, he is the one. You know, when I think about this tabernacle and how he told Moses, every step of how he won. Think about how he made us. That's right. He made us. And he put us together so uniquely. He knew just where to put our arms. He knew we were going to be walking. So he gave us two legs made like poles and something flat up under him called feet to balance us. Mm -hmm. He did all of that. He didn't put our eyes in the back of our heads. He put them in the front so we could walk forward and see what was in front of us. Ears to hear. This tongue in our mouth is very important for speech. I watched the speech therapist when he's working with my son, and he's giving him words to say. He said, say, take. He said, but that tongue got to do something. Uh -huh. When we speak out our words, we don't even realize what's going on in our mouth. Certain words use the throat when you say take 
that envy comes from the throat. But God put us together so that everything worked in order. That's right. He put a heart in us that beats. <coughs> And it beats at a certain rhythm. Mm -hmm. If it gets out of rhythm, then something's wrong. Mm -hmm. He put that there. Lungs. Think about our lungs when we breathe. That's our filter for the air that goes in and comes out. And then he's saying, don't contaminate this temple. Mm -hmm. But we do, don't yeah. we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We want to get a cigarette mm -hmm. and pull it down where we're supposed to be getting good air. Mm -hmm. But we contaminate. And we and we pay for that disobedience. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. See, that's disobedience. Mm -hmm. We pay for that. We have respiratory problems. We get cancer, you know. But God has the master plan yes, he does. for everything. Everything. And even in life, when, as Sister Winston said, we should go to him. If we belong to him, go to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we're getting ready to purchase an automobile. That's right. When we want to buy a house. Mm -hmm. Our children when they're trying to decide what college they're going to. All the decisions of life include him and them wait That's right. for the answer. That's right. All of us have learned lessons from moving too fast. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have to learn those lessons in order to do better. Mm -hmm. Just like them. You know, God knew that his children were going to falter. But he didn't leave them. He stayed with them. He wanted them to know, I'm with you. And that's the way he is with us. He's with us. And all of these lessons that we have on obedience, is to bring things back to our memory. You know, we can relate to different things mm -hmm. and say, uh, like Deacon uh, Mike, was it last week that you came in, or it could have been a week before, and you said, you know, I was looking at this lesson, and I realized I need to do better. Yeah. That's what he came in the door saying. Or he was already in the door when I walked in. <laughs> and that's what he approached me with. I need to do better because I'm looking at the lesson and see where I was falling short. And that's for all of us. Amen. You know, Amen. we are called to be obedient people. Amen. It's not easy, but we can do it with the help of the Lord, mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit with the people that he, our church family, mm -hmm. that, that surrounds us. Mm -hmm. Because we know we can't get counsel from the outside. We're not, not supposed, supposed to. Not godly counsel. So, beautiful, beautiful lesson. Mm -hmm. And as I said in the beginning, it took me back to a place many years ago. <laughs> when we sat in here and went through these type of lessons, talking about all the different parts to the building. Mm -hmm. You know, and so many times, you're used to hearing lessons where it's telling a story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's talking about characters in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then when you have to sit and hear, and you're like this. <laughs> but it's, it's a purpose in it. It's a purpose in it. And I don't care if you got to sit two, three hours, two or three weeks listening to the post and how many cubic inches and feet 
And yeah. And I tell you, I don't think I'm the only one. But I was saying, Lord, please, when we gonna get out of this? But I, you know, I have to be honest. But I understand that all of it is to show us God's plan. You know, he knew how he wanted things. He knew. And he had to tell somebody that he knew was going to carry it out. He didn't just choose anyone. He chose Moses. And Moses told the people what to do, and they were obedient. And that's very important. You may have mentioned, you may have mentioned about, uh, quote, blueprint. Now, uh, me, I've, I've been in construction for quite a while. Don't know anything about it other than accounting. Because <laughs> I am an accountant. The, but the thing about it I do know and by look, looking at things that have failed in the past, not the companies that I've worked for, necessarily worked for, but of other companies nationwide, mm -hmm. because they're trying to, quote, cut corners cut or do corners. things faster. When they, when they make measurement, if the measurement is from here to here for a certain reason. Mm -hmm. All right, well, just because you don't know the reason doesn't mean the reason isn't good. Yeah, because, see, probably, the, the reason why that was made is because engineers know that certain things are going to happen. Uh, metals expand and contract due to weather. Right. right? The, uh, and now I'm not saying that for this particular instance, but he God put God gave you directions because he knows best. Do not cut corners. Don't Do exactly man. what he says because he is the master architect. Yes. He knows exactly what's going to happen if we cut corners. Mm -hmm. And so this thing about obedience, that's the, that, is, that is the key. Be obedient to what he tells you because he's not going to guide you. He's not going to, he's not going to lead you on a path of destruction. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Lead us not into, into, the, into temptation? He's not going to lead us into that. Mm -hmm. He will steer. If he did, he would have he led them. He would have led the, the Israelites on, uh, to be destroyed when they when, uh, in the beginning. So, uh, it, it, obedience to God in this this thing here is the key. And once we learn how to do that, and be, if he says twelve inches, uh, if he says twelve and a half inches, make it twelve and a half inches, not twelve inches. Twelve. Oh, twelve and a quarter is good enough. No, it's not. He said twelve and a half. There is a reason. Be precise. What is amazing to me is that he is so sovereign. And he created the materials that they're using to build his temple. If you don't follow his, um, his plans, you're not going to get the result that you want to have. Which is the same for our lives. If you don't follow his plans, you're not going to get the results for your life. Or you might have to back up. Have you ever started doing something, thought you was doing it a, diff a way that gets you there quick and gets you to the, the end quick? Then you had to go all the way back to the beginning <laughs> and to start, to start all over to do it the way you were supposed, you was directed to do. All right. And so God is letting us know in this lesson that I am the master builder. Mm -hmm. I'm the one you follow. Right. And it's not just in a building because he built us. He did. I'll tell you just what you was just saying. I'm amazed at the human body. Me too. I'm amazed that women can reproduce another human being. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. these are things that only could have happened through the, the majesty and the sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. And we just got to remember, following him, you will never make a mistake. Never make a mistake. I agree with you on that. Yeah. You, you will never make a mistake following him. You know, something else I noticed when I was reading is that when you get ready to do something, you just don't jump up and do it. You have to prepare for it. Sure. The material was there. Mm -hmm. And I thought about 
how uh, we have the building fund. When you get ready to repair things in this church, the money should be there. That's right. If you're serving God, the money is there. And if it's not, you're supposed to have faith and step out of that. If this building is supposed to be repaired, God's going to do it. That's right. So he is. That's right. You know, I, um, it's a, a young female. It's my grandson's girlfriend. And they're young, you know, and they're, she, what is it, about 19? <laughs> and so she's always saying, I want to come over to your house when you're cooking so I can come in the kitchen with you. And she did. One time she wanted me to make her a banana pudding. And she came right there. We got the stuff and made the banana pudding. So she told me a little while ago, she said, you know, I got this cookbook. I want to bring it over there and let you see it. It's got everything in it. So yesterday, now this is a couple of weeks ago, I haven't seen it. I texted her. I said, what happened to the cookbook that you were going to bring and let me see? So she ended up over there yesterday in the afternoon, but I was visiting my son. So she texted me. I'm at your house. I'm going to leave the cookbook on the porch. So she did. I got home. The cookbook is about this big. And I just started skimming through it. It does have everything in it. I never saw a cookbook <laughs> with so much stuff. De detail. Detail. Uh -huh. You know, besides the recipes. I mean, it tells you measurements. It tells you the different cuts of the animal and shows the design from veal to cow to pig, you know, mm -hmm. pies, pie crust, anything you could think about cooking, it seems to be in this book. And I took my phone out and started scanning <laughs> a couple of recipes. <laughs> I know I got to give it back to her, but Simple things, you know, corn chowder, uh, rice, and all the different kinds of rice. Mm -hmm. How to cook these different kinds. I thought it was amazing when I learned how to bake rice. Because I thought the only way to cook it was to boil it on the stove. Yeah. <laughs> but no, you can actually put it in a casserole dish and put it in an oven and bake it. It still turns out rice. But what's good about that, now you can bake a large enough amount that you can separate it, freeze it, and save it. So when I looked at that, I said, Lord, you showed me this. I know it has nothing to do with spirit, but things can be so complete. And that's the way he is with what he does. His word is complete. Anything we need to know, go to the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go Amen. to the word. It's, it's in here. Mm -hmm. You know, and not only for us, but for us to share it with somebody else. Amen. So, I can appreciate this lesson. I'm a lot more mature <laughs> than I was years ago. When I was sitting in here, hearing all that stuff, it means more. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the more mature you get, you can internalize things right. a lot better. And so it means so much more to me now, and I'm glad about it. Me too. So one thing about that, you know, the, uh, the tabernacle, the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Because, and I'm glad you said that, because it took my mind back to remember when he said the curtains, yeah. mm -hmm. separation, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. all of that was for them 
then. Mm -hmm. But then when Jesus came, the veil ripped from the top to the bottom. From the top to the bottom. And just think the details of that veil yeah. was awesome. Yes. I've never heard of a material that thick and that high up. And that it was it was described as being beautiful, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, wow, God ain't playing. No, you know, whenever He do something, it's magnificent. You go up in Europe, you watch some of those shows that come in, they come traveling the, 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 the Europe, uh, Europe tour and all that stuff. Uh -huh. Every one of those uh, uh, European countries, they got the most magnificent, magnificent cathedrals and churches. I said, somebody had some time to build these things. Mm -hmm. And they took their time mm -hmm. you know, and built those. But they were still, I think they were doing that for man. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. They still, they still worshiping. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it was guided by God, yeah. too. Yeah. You, know? Yeah. But you got to look at some of the pictures up there. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you know. Beautiful. But just the, mm -hmm. the colors, mm -hmm. the jewels, Absolutely. everything. So, as I say, it's so much for us to learn from these type lessons. Mm -hmm. And we're still, we're going to still be covering OBP. So we'll get ready to go forth in our study because next week it'll be obedience on the Day of Atonement. Something else for us to learn. <coughs> Can I read something like sure, that? Sure, you can. Uh, Romans the 12th chapter. Mm -hmm. Very slow in time. Yeah. For, for as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. Having, and I, I like to say, having these gifts different according to the grace that's given to us, Brother prophecy, let him prophesy according to the portion of faith. I like to that because he said, Moses didn't build this alone. He did not. Mm -hmm. He did not. And I had a cross reference, a, a scripture I wanted to read on that very last part when we were talking about um, the cloud and the fire significant of God's and the verse that I want to share is coming out of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor for safety. And he was with them. He's with us. So be of good courage and know that he is with us. So with that, we'll ask Deacon to dismiss the class.